Guys, I live in Los Angeles, home to one of the largest Salvadoran populations outside of El Salvador. I literally walked down the street to the nearest Salvadoran restaurant and asked the owner to help me on this script. If you're ever in LA, check out Sabor Latino on Fountain Avenue. They don't really speak a lot of English, so you might have to know a little bit of Spanish, but hey, they're cool, and I recommend getting the pupusas and tamales con pollo with tapatio on top. I know tapatio is actually Mexican, but tapatio goes great with everything. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. We're back in the Latin world covering El Salvador, AKA the honey badger of Central America. Let's see where this badger lies. Let's be real for a sec. El Salvador sometimes gets a bad rap for its past and questionable policies, but let's try to look at everything from all sides. The name of the country means the savior in reference to Jesus Christ that the Spanish conquistador designated to the area way back in the 1500s. First of all, the country is located on the Central American Isthmus right between the bottom borders of Guatemala and Honduras on the coast of the Pacific Ocean, ending at the Gulf of Fonseca. The country is divided into 14 departments with the precariously positioned capital San Salvador located right in the middle of the Boqueron Volcano Valley where there are, you know, volcanoes. At only about 270 kilometers wide and 142 kilometers long, El Salvador is the smallest country in Central America and is the only one with no Caribbean coastline. El Salvador also dominates the Bahia de los Union or the Union Bay in the east side where various islands are split between them and Honduras. Isla Conejo es nuestra! <laughs> ya quisieras! Desgraciado! Maldito! Nunca te escaparás de esta! Ay, Dios mío, ¿por qué? Whoa, slow down, hermanos. We'll get to that later. As a densely packed country, road networks reach virtually every corner of the country from Morazan to Ahuachapan, which has the pleasantly named Parque Nacional El Imposible or the Impossible Park. Speaking of which, the Ruta de las Flores is like a time traveling road where you can get to see the entire story of El Salvador. The road is surrounded by multiple flower species that blossom most prevalently in November through February. Along the way, you can see waterfalls and villages and colonial style buildings. Home to the ancient Tasumal and San Andres Mayan ruins, as well as Hoya de Seren, which is like the Pompeii pay of the Americas, where an entire farming community was well-preserved under a layer of volcanic ash. Unlike Pompeii, though, the people did escape. It's just, you know, their homes and household objects were solidified. Just leave the chair! But it's such a good chair! Oh, actually, it is a really good chair. Yeah, I know, right? You guys will thank me later. Whoa. Even though the country has a ton of coastline, there aren't really many seaports or docking points. As of right now, the country only has one main seaport at Union Bay at Kutuko and a container terminal for cargo at Akahutla on the west side. Most people who arrive either just drive in from Guatemala or Honduras, borders are very laid back, or they just fly in usually to San Salvador or Santa Ana or San Miguel, the largest cities. It's pretty crazy how the country is built considering the physical realm they inhabit. Let's explain. El Salvador is a place where the people are kind of, how can I put this? Resilient, tenacious, intrepid. No, but seriously, the people in El Salvador are kind of surrounded by natural calamity in all directions, and yet they're still just kind of used to it. The country has over 20 main volcanoes. Literally every major city is located right next to a volcano that is named after itself, many of which have erupted in the past century alone, some multiple times. On top of that, the country lies right on the Cocos Tectonic Plate that subducts under the North American and Caribbean plates. This is the source of many regular earthquakes as well. I mean, San Salvador was destroyed twice and severely damaged three times just in the 20th century by either earthquakes or volcanic activity. Activity. They really don't care though, even though that they know that doom is impending. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Many of the major lakes like Coatepeque and Yopango are actually caldera lakes resting on the domes of dormant Holocene volcanoes. There are over 300 rivers, the most important one being Rio Lempa that slithers through the hills, congesting into a huge reservoir lake thanks to the dam that was built, eventually flowing into the Pacific Ocean. The country is topped with the Sierra Madre mountain chain in the north, with the highest peak surprisingly not being a volcano, El Pital, at over 2,700 meters. Beaches and lowlands can be found on the coast, and the most popular one being Cuco Beach. Wildlife conservation has been a pressing issue of importance especially in the past few decades, since deforestation and industrial runoff water contamination has hit hard in certain places. I mean, don't even get started on the Asahuate River. This is why El Salvador actually doesn't mind tropical storms and hurricanes too much, because the collection of rainwater actually helps alleviate the freshwater issue a little bit. Manufacturing and industry take up the largest portion of the economy, then agriculture, which explains why textiles are one of the largest export products. Unlike some other Central American countries, though, Salvadorans prefer more dishes with corn in place of rice. Dishes like atol, elotes locos, tamales, and the most prevalently consumed staple, pupusas, can be found everywhere. Don't be surprised to find lots of dishes seasoned with loroco and isote, too. Sounds good, right? Well, that's probably gonna be the last uplifting thing I'll say for a while because now we have to talk about the most dreadworthy part of El Salvador. <laughs>
Before we get into this, just point of reference, the people here are called Salvadorans, not Salvadorians or El Salvadorans or El Salvadorians. It's Salvadorans, got it? Good. First of all, the country has about 6.4 million people and is the most densely populated country in Central America. In terms of ethnicity, the country is about 86% mestizo, 13% white, and the rest is a conglomeration of multiple people groups like Afro-Salvadorans, Arabs, Chinese, and Jews. This is where the most controversy comes in. Out of all the countries in Central America, El Salvador is kind of like, Let's just put it this way. If this was X-Men, they would probably be Wolverine. Salvadorians are relentless, rough, dealing with a crazy violent past that still influences how they live today. Yet, they are still trying to pull through the best that they can and fix things up a little bit. Salvadorian culture is kind of evolved into this kind of mundane aggressiveness that everyone is just kind of used to. I mean, in the town of Nejapa, they celebrate by throwing fireballs at each other. Most of this has to do with the history. I mean, if we go way back, Salvadorans have roots from the interesting Mesoamerican tribe called the Pipil. Let me tell you a little something about the Pipil. When the Mayans and the Tlaxcalans in Mexico and Guatemala thought the Spaniards were gods, the people were like, nope, and kicked the Spaniards out of their then-called nation of Quetzcatlan twice. Then the second time, they were like, ha, we got your guns. You want them back? Come get them. No, seriously, they stole the guns from the Spaniards. Fast forward to the civil war that erupted from 1979 to 1992. Almost every single Salvadoran today has been affected by this war somehow one way or another, and the scars still linger today. I mean, they've had like five coup d'etats, and one of the main political parties, the FMLN, was created by a melding of five guerrilla groups. Public policy and politics are always a hot but an issue that makes everyone kind of roll their eyes in frustration. And I hate saying this, but as of right now, yes, to this day, El Salvador is classified as the most dangerous peacetime country in the world. The biggest issue being the vast quantities of gangs that inhabit the country, which contribute to murders on a regular basis. Granted, keep in mind, El Salvador loves having tourists and visitors, and most of the touristy areas are safe and welcoming. It's really just the rural areas that have the issues. If you decide to go, though, you are advised to take a few precautions. Every Salvadorian I talk to has told me this. Be mindful of these tips. Don't make a spectacle of yourself. Number one, don't wear any flashy, expensive-looking attire, and don't carry too much with you. Dress plain and casual. It's probably best not to wear any jewelry, or if you must, wear cheap, plastic jewelry. Avoid wearing the numbers 13 and 18, as it may get you confused with the gang MS-13, one of the largest in the area. Thank you. Fiscal policy is the biggest challenge for the government, even after 2001 when they dropped the cologne and adopted the US dollar as legal tender, progress is still slow. Fields like academia and healthcare have suffered since the war, however, funds from foreign agencies provide a budget with development programs and facilities. Salvadorans definitely have an artistic side though. The town of La Palma has become famous for a school of art started by Fernando Lort. The town of Yobasco is also known for its ceramics, while San Sebastian is known for its textile art. Catholic church plays a huge role in culture as about 75% of the country adheres to the faith, which is interesting because they were a target of government repression during the war years. When it comes to music, they created their own style of cumbia that sticks out and everyone knows about it. Interesting how music brings people together. Let's talk more about that. El Salvador is kind of like the diplomatic renegade. They tend to make friends with people that have controversy. El Salvador officially recognizes the states of Palestine, Kosovo, and the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic of Western Sahara because why not? Honduras is probably the biggest rival. They had a brief war that only lasted 100 hours and don't even get started on the whole Isla Conejo or Rabbit Island thing that they have ownership disputes with. The US and Canada are close allies as they have the largest Salvadoran communities outside of El Salvador, most prevalently in the West Coast cities like Los Angeles and Vancouver. When it comes to their best friends, however, literally every Salvadoran I talked to said the same thing, Guatemala. Guatemala has never had any major conflicts with El Salvador and Guatemalans are considered brothers. They have similar cultures, food, and have been doing business well for centuries. In conclusion, El Salvador is kind of tough. They live surrounded by volcanoes, earthquakes, fireballs, and they like hurricanes. Despite the drama and political upheaval though, you gotta give props to the durable Salvadoran lifestyle. These people know how to take hits and come right back up. Stay tuned, Equatorial Guinea, the only Spanish-speaking country in Africa, is coming up next.